we spoke, I um, I was I started my overseas campaign. I went to North America, to Canada, um, had some races there, and then went to France for some races, and then went to Italy for some races. And in the one of the last races, just before Christmas, I had a really bad crash. I um, I broke my back actually. I um, I broke the wings off my off my vertebrae, and so I've actually been in Canberra for the last sort of uh, month really, doing uh, a little bit of rehab every day. I've um, I've been working out e every day, trying to get my body fit and healthy to, to get ready for Sochi. And fortunately, yesterday I got the all clear from the doctor, and I'm actually I'm going to be able to compete in the Olympics, which is a huge relief for me. Um, it's been a long <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's been um, it's been certainly challenging. Um, it's been a long six weeks, just uh, especially being off snow. Um, I would have liked to have been skiing, but unfortunately, I've been in the gym trying to trying to prepare my body and, and heal up. But it's um it's been going really well. And so uh, yeah, now we are here in, in in Russia, and it's very exciting. I was here 12 months ago, and nothing was built, and now it's uh, a buzzing metropolis. It's it's pretty crazy. It's um, a massive arena, and everything's everything's quite phenomenal to to witness. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting on the hill and and doing the best that I can. Um, I've had a bit of a setback, but it's not a uh, it's not going to put me out of the race, and I'm going to be here competing in Russia, and I'm going to give it my best go, and, and that's all anyone can ask of me. I guess. Uh, <laughs> do you guys have any questions, and then we can, um, yeah, I can fire back. Yep. Um, due to your accident, will you have any future problems with your back when competing or training? That's a good question. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I'm in, I'm in good shape at the moment, um, and I've done as much as I possibly can to, to, to get ready for these Olympics. Obviously, I'm going to be, um, or my, my fitness isn't as good as what it could be, but for me, it doesn't really matter. It's an amazing opportunity to compete at the Olympics, and I'm just sort of going to take it each day as it comes, do as much as I can each day, and then, yeah, just deliver a performance I'm going to be proud of on the day. For me, it's yeah, it's not so important how I'm doing compared to where I was. It's about what I'm doing right now and and uh, what kind of shape I can be in. Um, were you scared about going to Sochi due to what has been happening lately? Um, yeah, a little bit nervous, um, but that kind of stuff. The media always has a, a tendency to blow that sort of stuff out of proportion, and I'm um, my job is to compete at the Olympics. My job is to to ski fast and, and do my country proud, and I'm trusting the AOC and the IOC to, to do their job and to keep me safe. And um, so far, they're doing a pretty good job. And I mean, you you get here, and the security is amazing, and, and everything. They're doing a fantastic job. So I'm I'm uh, I'm feeling very good about it now. What do you feel like when you step onto the ice when you're about to start skiing? Um, it's a pretty amazing experience. Um, competing the Olympics is like nothing um, I've experienced before. It's it's um it's it's the culmination of a, of a whole sporting career. So it's to to have the whole world watching you. It, it's pretty amazing, and I like to. I really sort of feel that atmosphere and, and get amongst the whole Olympic spirit and um, enjoy it for what it is and, and just have fun and it's um yeah with all the cameras and all the all the, the, the crowd cheering it's it's quite a remarkable experience to be part of and um, yeah I'm I'm very fortunate and looking forward to the day. When you injured your back, what were your doubts about going to the games? Oh, when I hurt my back in Italy, um, that was just before Christmas, and yeah, I thought I was done. I didn't think I'd be able to, to get back in time. Um, I spent a couple of weeks in uh, in Italy uh, before I could fly home, and I, 
was slowly getting better, but I was really unsure of my ability to come back. And then when I got back to Canberra, I went to the AIS, and they were so supportive and so confident that I was going to be back on snow. And so I started to believe that, and yeah, it was quite um, quite remarkable, really. And I, I started doing a rehab program, and I got better and better every day. And I really started to believe I'd not only come back to the Olympics, but I'd be in pretty good shape. So it's um, it's been a tough road, but. Yeah, it's um, it's certainly been a learning experience, and I've learned a lot about myself. And yeah, just looking forward to to competing on on the twentieth. Scott, I'm going to just interrupt and welcome Portion West and Haven Primary School um, down in Victoria. Uh, can you hear us, Horsham, and give us a big wave for Scott? <laughs> We work out that audio. So let's go back to St Dominic's and call for another question. No worries. What do you like more, alpine skiing or freestyle skiing, ski cross? Ah, I I like ski cross more. I um I used to race alpine for a few years. I um, made a switch to ski cross team just because I I I do a lot of different types of skiing. I really enjoy going free riding. I enjoy big mountain skiing, and I enjoy the racing. So for me, ski cross was the perfect fit. It had everything, and then you get to race your competitors, and yeah, it's pretty exciting to watch. So yeah, that was that's an easy choice for me. Ski cross all the way. Who was your biggest role model growing up? Oh, my biggest role model? Um, for me, it's probably Darren Rowles. He was an alpine skier, an American skier. Um, he won. Uh, he was. He won so many downhills and um, quite a remarkable skier in his own right. And then he actually made the race, made the switch to to ski cross right before the last Olympics. So I was fortunate enough to be able to compete against him in the. In the 2010 Olympics, so that was a dream come true for me, and yeah, it's a um, pretty humbling experience to be able to compete against your your role model. What were your intentions leading up to Sochi? My intentions: I wanted to win a medal. I still do want to win a medal. Um, I guess it's been a been a rough road uh, the last six weeks, but the the reality is that I'm here and. Looking forward to getting it done, and dreams come true of the Olympics. And I'm looking forward to getting on that stage and and yeah, delivering a performance I'm proud of, and and getting it done. Do you ever get scared that you're really going to hurt yourself for a race? Um, not so much. Um, for me, it's I don't know. I'm I'm thinking about about winning and thinking about what I've got to do to be faster. So that sort of stuff never usually comes into play. Um, I'm sure it probably might a little bit, given uh, my last six weeks and, and my current injury. But at the end of the day, I've got too much else to, to worry myself with to, to be concerned about that sort of stuff. Uh, were you stressed and panicking after you had your accident? Yes, <laughs> stress would be a good word. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah, wh where I was going to be at, um, and if I was going to be able to compete. And, I've been training for the last four years for these Olympics, and for them just to sort of be taken away from me was a huge um, setback. And um, fortunately, though, the people at the AIS did a good job, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm back here and yeah, ready to ready to compete. Did you think that you would make it to Sochi Olympics after suffering your accident? No, no straight away, not at all. Um, I was in the hospital in Italy for about four days, um, and I wasn't moving very fast at all. So I was, yeah, very concerned about my ability to come back to the Olympics. Um, but yeah, as I said, I got back to Canberra, and um, the doctors instilled so much confidence in me, and I really thought that it was going to be achievable. And I've been working so hard every day to get here, and yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a huge accomplishment um, to be here, and I'm looking forward to it. How long were you in pain, or when you had your accident? Um, 
Oh, it was pretty sore for a good couple of weeks. Um, so what happens is it's the it's the side of my back, it's the side of my vertebrae that are broken. Um, but all the muscles in your back connect to those bones. So every movement is so painful. Um, so it's yeah a little bit challenging, um, and it was certainly very difficult to work through. But um, yeah, it's 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 all good now. So I'm I'm pain free now, which is nice. Do you ha ever have issues with language barriers when you are competing in different countries? Yeah, for sure. And I always try and make an effort to um, to speak the language that I'm in. I think it's important because we travel to so many so many um, different countries and experience so many different cultures. I think it's really important that we um, try and speak the language and and try and um, be a part of that culture. And that's what that's what it's so exciting about traveling and seeing so many different places. My language skills are less than uh, efficient, but I, I do try. As an Olympian, do you have lots of pressure and feel you don't want to let your country down? Um, I guess we're really fortunate to be Australian because all, all Australians get behind everyone and and want everyone to, to compete and do their best. And um, it's Yeah, you do feel a little bit of pressure, but it's, I think I put more pressure on myself um, than anything, and um, yeah, I think I think uh, as far as pressure from Australia goes, it's about doing your best, and if um, if, if that's what you do, then then, then everyone's going to be happy for you. How did you feel when you when you received the all clear to compete in the Sochi Olympics? Oh, it's very exciting. Um, yeah, it was a pretty stressful week because I got back on snow for the first time this week and I wasn't really sure how I was going to go. So um, that was, yeah, it was um, really exciting and sort of a, um, a pat on the back for all my hard work over the last couple of weeks. And, um, yeah, I really look forward to, to racing here. Were you exhausted after each night after your rehab? Yeah, so I was doing um, I was doing a lot of training. I was um, I was getting up at six in the morning, um, so I was going for a swim. I was swimming about a couple. I'd swim a couple of k's in the morning. Then I'd do a gym session, then a physio, Pilates. Then I'd go to another pool session. Then I'd do a recovery session, then a cardio session. So. I was I was working out from six in the morning till six at night. So um, I'd have dinner and go straight to bed because I was so tired. We might have um, missed a little bit of it. Do you need to keep moving in? Squish in, squish in. But that's um, yeah, that's the way it goes. And, um, yeah, I was, I was really really tired, but it's it's, it's good fun and, and I needed to put the work in to get here. Welcome, <laughs> I think Horsham West Haven have maybe managed to get their video and audio. They were okay for a while, but I think we've dropped out again. That's okay. We'll go to St. back to St. Dominic's. I might take a few more questions for St. Dominic's, and then uh, we might get Horsham West Haven one on one. With okay. So a few more questions from St. Dominic. What date and time is your first Sochi event? We all want to watch. <laughs> so my race I, is on the 20th um, of February, and I think it's about 11 o'clock, so I think it's about 8.30 at night. Um, I will have to double check that, though. I'm, um, I'm not too sure. I get told all these things. How much training is involved in preparing for the Olympics? Oh, it's a lifetime of training. Um, it's for me. It's it's been yeah a lifetime in the making, um, and I guess every day is, is is important as the last. And you try and do whatever you can every day. And um, I'm very fortunate. Not everyone gets to make the Olympics, and I'm I'm very fortunate to be able to compete here. And yeah, looking forward to it. I've got a question like from Jindabyne Central School. Um, Jindabyne Central School wants to know uh, what's it like to ski to ski on those steep hills. Uh, our track actually isn't too steep, so it's it's nice for the ski cross. There's 
some very, very big features that I hear. So it's going to be a, a very intimidating, but it's going to be a very exciting race to watch. And I'll just uh, put forward one more question from Gindervine Central School. How many medals have you won? Unfortunately, I haven't won any Olympic medals yet. I'm hoping that uh, this is my this is my year. This is my race. Um, I have won a, a World Cup, um, so that was the highlight of my career. Um, and I was seventh at last Olympics, so I'm looking forward to, to making it through one more round and making the big final and, and taking home a medal this time. Now, Dindabine Central may have missed uh, one of the earlier questions, but what was your worst stack or fall, and did you break any bones? Um, I've had a few crashes. I think this one uh, six weeks ago was probably my, my worst. I, um, I, bur I broke the, the transverse processes, which is the wings on your vertebrae. So I broke four vertebrae in my, in my lower back. Um, and that's uh, incredibly painful. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it's been a long road, but I'm, I'm here now looking forward to it. Uh, I've got a few more questions from Jim Devine. Um, have you tried some of the local delicacies while in Sochi, and, and what are they like? Not yet. We arrived late last night, um, just up from Munich. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to checking it out today. I'll go down to the Athletes Village, and um, yeah, it should be um, it should be good. I'm looking forward to trying a few dishes. What's your Olympic uniform like, and do you like it? It is very good. I'm not sure if you can see this, but this is one of the one of the tops. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's amazing how much stuff you get. Um, it's pretty exciting. It's like an early Christmas. Um, we arrived late last night and we had suitcases on our bed um, for us, full of clothes to, to try on. And yeah, it's a pretty exciting time. And one more question from Jim Devine. Um, do the Russians sound funny with their accent? <laughs> <laughs> they are all trying so hard to speak English, and it's oh, it's it's pretty incredible and um, humbling and accommod like they've been so accommodating and so many. Um, it's just it's it's so it's so fun and um, so friendly and yeah, very hospitable. So it's yeah, it's they're um that is a little bit funny, but it's they're trying. Back to you, and Dominic. Which was your favourite venue? Which is my favourite venue? Um, I'm not sure, but I think uh, I enjoy Switzerland's one of my favourite places to go to. Um, it's an incredibly beautiful place, but I'm actually really looking forward to getting up on the hill here. They have some amazing skiing, and um, from what I gather, the, the track is amazing here. So I'm looking forward to to getting up there, and I think this might be my new favourite place. What would you like to do when you, you retire? Um, i got a few things <laughs> um, up my sleeve. I'm actually at UNSW studying an engineering and commerce degree. Um, so that's really important to me. And um, I think it's, I've, I've tried to study and balance uh, my uni life um, with my skiing, just so when I do retire, I have something to move on to and uh, pursue another sort of avenue of life, um, so to speak. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to finishing that degree, and then yeah, who knows? We'll see where see where everything takes me. How did you feel when you won the World Cup? That was an incredible experience. That was um, yeah, something that I'll always cherish, and um, it sort of set the tone for that year, and, and really instilled confidence in me that I knew I could be the best. Um, and unfortunately, it's been yeah, a few years since I've, I won that uh, World Cup, so I'm looking forward to, to getting back on the snow here and, and seeing if I can go, yeah, do, it, do that again, really. How much, fun ha had you, have you, how much fun have you had in the Olympics? I have had a lot of fun. I've only just got here, though. Um, but given my experience from Vancouver, it's, it's an overwhelming and... Um, incredible sort of atmosphere and I'm looking forward to, to seeing that here and yeah just getting out and enjoying the whole experience. The Olympics are like nothing else. Um, it really is a, a combination of your whole sporting career and um, yeah it's it's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to getting out there. Have you completely finished having rehab and operations on your back? 
No, so I didn't have any operations. I've just been doing um, just doing doing rehab and, and little exercises. Um, but no, no, nothing's over yet. Um, so what I do is I have to because I get a little bit stiff in the morning. Um, I get up about an hour and a half before I go skiing just to to work my body. Um, and so I'll, I'll jump on the bike. I'll go for a run. I'll I'll stretch. I'll do a bunch of little exercises just to get everything, all those muscles in my back activated. Um, and then, so I work out for about an hour before I even get on the snow. And then, when I finish skiing, I've got to do um, a lot more recovery work and a, a lot more exercises just so I can keep building that muscle and, and try and put myself in the best possible shape for the event. What is the hardest thing? Sorry, Jess. Yeah, I got a few more questions from Gin Divine Central. And because yeah. I know you're not a sensitive man, I'm going to ask this one, Scott. Are you yeah. bald because you're more aerodynamic? Well, I wear a helmet, <laughs> <laughs> so the baldness doesn't really uh, it doesn't really do any favors. Um, but uh, we'll yes, yeah, not not for aerodynamics, purely for looks. <laughs> we'll move on from there. Do you snowboard as well? I tried snowboarding when I was really young, but I was so bad at it that I gave up. Um, I wasn't as good as I could I could ski, so I uh, yeah I gave up pretty quickly and, and kept skiing. One more question from the Jindabine School: Do you do jumps and boxes and rails? Oh, I ski a lot of park actually. Um, I really enjoy it, um, and I got a, a lot of good friends like Russ Henshaw, Charlie Timmins, Bowen Ferguson, Jordan Houghton actually, and we we ski a lot of park together. Um, and, that's uh, a part of my training that I really enjoy, and I think that's helped a lot with my ski cross skiing. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to just being a little more park uh, next year. Right, let's go back to St. Dominic's, and I might uh, just ask St. Dominic's for a few more questions. And then we've got one school who hasn't been able to log on, so if Scott's got a few spare minutes, we'll just see if we can connect Scott with Horsham Western Haven offline. So, St. Dominic's, back to you for a few more minutes. What is the hardest thing about skiing? The hardest thing about skiing? I'm not sure. I think because I learned it at such an early age, um, it's sort of come natural to me. Um, and yeah, I guess I skip, uh, skip that whole sort of learning process. But for me, the hardest thing is about um, the performance in the turns and, and generating speed. I'm, I'm quite good at doing the jumps and the features. Um, but it's my alpine skiing that lets me down, so I work really hard um, just to get my alpine skiing to a competitive sort of um, ability. What's the fastest time you've ever had in ski cross? Well, because the uh, the courses change um, from destination or from location to location, so that the times um, aren't really too relevant. Um, it's not a matter of, it's more how you go compared to your competitors, really. Um, so it's, yeah, a fastest time, I'm not really sure, but it's, um, yeah, it's about beating your competitors. Have you ever wanted to just give up? <laughs> um, I certainly thought about that when I was in the, the um, hospital in Italy. Um, I really didn't think I had a chance and I think I was I was tired and it was, yeah, giving up was certainly um, an easier option but that's not, that's not in me and um, I think once I sort of got my feet back under me and started walking again then I think I realised that I, I might just be able to get back in time so, um, yeah. Giving up some, sometimes plays a part and sometimes comes into mind, but uh, for me, it's all about pushing on and you always suffer setbacks, um, but it's, it's how you overcome them that defines you as a person. Thanks, Scott. I'm going to ask St. Dominic's Primary now to farewell you. Um, we're going to try and welcome one of our other schools into the chat. Um, so, St. Dominic's, thanks so much for participating in Chat for Chat. I'd like to give Scott a big young age and good luck. See you guys. Yay. Thank you. Um, we 
we'd just like to thank you, Scott, for listening to our questions, and we'll all be watching you in the Sochi Olympics. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Awesome. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Okay. Thanks, Scott. I'm just waiting. If you've got another 10 minutes, I'm just waiting for... Yeah, your, um, not a problem. I'll just grab record. my charger if that's okay. Okay. I'll be back in two seconds. Oh, you got one more second.